All right, everyone, we'll go ahead and get started. I appreciate you taking time out of your Friday to join. Uh, the, the goal today is to just provide a quick overview of the CodeFresh software delivery platform. For those of you that may be familiar with CodeFresh, we have our classic platform and have recently um, added our Argo-based enterprise software delivery platform. So for those of you that may be uh, breaching the subject of CodeFresh for the first time, of Argo for the first time, or perhaps looking to scale your Argo deployment, uh, excited to kind of give you an overview of what we're working on. And as you may notice here on the screen that I'm sharing, uh, here's just an overview of some of the folks that we work with if you're new to CodeFresh, as well as some of the folks in the Argo community that are using and or contributing to Argo itself. I just want to show a few different slides here to kind of set the stage for what we're going to look at in the CodeFresh environment. As I mentioned, if you don't have any familiarity with Argo, there's no problem there. But to, to provide just a quick overview, Argo is a compilation of four different projects that don't inherently work together. Um, so an easy way, as this graphic is showing here on the left, to kind of talk about what CodeFresh is doing is combining these four different components that are related to CI and CD, both Argo CD and rollouts that are CD focused, as well as events and workflows that are CI focused. And we're doing a lot of the work in the back end to make them interact together. And because we're doing that, there's certainly some advantages in terms of running uh, potentially your entire CI CD pipeline through CodeFresh but also we're making enhancements to the open source uh, versioning. And then we're also getting a lot of extra insights and visibility across your entire stack, integrating with different tools like GitHub, like Jira, et cetera. So we'll, we'll get into a little bit of what that means, but just wanted to set the stage. You can just think of Argo as the underlying engine uh, with which we're building this software delivery platform. Again, um, stating that we have the capability to go full CI, CD, end-to-end GitOps in our platform, we're bringing all of that together in a single pane of glass and something we'll take a much more extensive look at as well. Uh, I, I mentioned some of the benefits we derive from both being contributors to the open source community and benefiting from the growth, the rapid growth of the Argo open source community. We're bringing in a, a bunch of different features, uh, rapidly bringing them in, and then also testing, adding additional QA on top of them, et cetera. And I guess I'd pause there. Uh, we may send a, a question out. I'm just curious for everyone that has been able to join today. We'll send a question kind of related to your experience with Argo thus far. And I think a, another question as well. Just want to see where the audience is at in terms of both uh, exposure to Argo to date and then also the deployment uh, with which you're uh, deploying, how often you're deploying software currently with the existing tools that you may have. And lastly, I just want to call this out before we switch over to the environment. I mentioned we're bringing all of that CI CD capability into a single pane of glass. If you are, as an example, using Jenkins for your CI, we do have uh, users that are pulling images from Jenkins into the platform for some of the enhancements we're making on the CD side. It's not that you have to commit to the entire CI CD right out of the gate. But as we'll see here, uh, we're bringing integrations with GitHub as an example, Jira, Argo CD, and we're getting a lot of extra visibility on top of that that's going to allow you to keep much better track of everything that's going on in your environment. And also from a troubleshooting perspective, allow you to much more rapidly assess what's going on in the case of an unexpected behavior, a failure, et cetera. And uh, lastly, something I don't, I don't know that we'll touch on much today, uh, but would love to have a follow-up conversation if anyone's interested. Um, you can, if you've interacted with many open source tools in the past, uh, another benefit uh, in addition to all of the technical benefits we're making on top of Argo would be the support that we provide as well. Um, so we have a lot of open source users that are scaling Argo rapidly, need help not only from a technical uh, standpoint with some of the features that we're about to show here, but also from a support standpoint, uh, we are active contributors to the Argo project. Uh, and we have actually three contributors on staff, uh, certified contributors to the project. So a lot of in-house expertise that our users are benefiting from. So I'll, I'll take a quick look here at some of the different features um, available. And this would be in the situation where we've got a large footprint. Uh, we're running our entire GitOps through, uh, through CodeFresh. We've got this executive summary where we can search uh, across our entire stack. So we can search by failed, uh, succeeded pipelines um, by repository, branch, et cetera. And I would just call that out. Um, you can take a look. We'll have that ability to search across all of the different screens that we have. And then this executive summary as well, even when we're looking at, say, the past 30 days that all of our pipelines have been running, this is really beneficial from a few different perspectives. Obviously, we can see, hey, maybe uh, you know, throughout, I don't know, the last week or two, it looks like our success rate has gone down. Maybe we can probe in further, and there's extra tools that we have to do that that we'll get to here momentarily. 
but also as an example of what we're building on top of the open source versioning, where we see in, in this case, we've also got different screens with executive summaries of all of our pipelines, but we've got a summary of our most active, our longest delivery pipelines. And in addition to just saying, hey, not only is it passing 100% of the time, we're providing and tracking the number of executions, the average duration of executions as well. Um, so for instance, if you have a pipeline you're calling regularly, you're not inherently going to know that, yes, it passed failed, but say over the last 30 days, the execution time has slowed down 4%, has slowed down 10%. These are things we can stay in front of that have uh, very large technical and business implications as well. I'll transition quickly. Also, I do want to call out, um, feel free, the audio is only on my side today. So if you do have any questions, feel free to enter into the chat. Uh, if, if there's anything I can help with, um, happy to pause and, and feel free to make a note. Uh, let me know, Sharon, if anyone does respond there. I, I'll quickly call out, we've got applications here. Um, so again, we can search across all of our different applications. These are the Kubernetes resources associated and kind of the metadata associated with the images we have. I'll just click into this one as an example, and this is uh, more on the CD side. We're going to see a lot of, I, I mentioned earlier in those slides, the visibility that we have across the entire deployment. That is a huge benefit um, for, for many different reasons. So it, I'll kind of break this down one by one. Again, feel free to message me in the chat if you do have any questions or I can clarify anything. But we're deploying software here. Let's think about everything that's involved with that. We've got quickly access here to the previous version that was in this environment. We've also got access to the current image that is now in this environment that was a result of what these committers uh, and the associated pull request put into this image. We can also, in addition to seeing who the committers are here, we can also see the associated pull requests and link to those in our Git. We can also go to JIRA for issue management and see the associated JIRA that was part of this pull request. We've got all of this access here. Uh, and apologies as my, my internet's running a little bit slow, uh, but we can see all of this information here immediately. And I'd also add anytime we're making this type of pull request, we're tracking here in Git as well the exact code changes that were made. So it looks like this ran successfully, we're not having any issues, but certainly in the case that we are having any type of issues, we can quickly see the exact changes that were made and associated with this pull request. And lastly, not only do we have the most recent version, we've got an entire repository here of every change we've ever made to this image. So it kind of intuitively, you can see we can search across here. Maybe we had a successful delivery of this image on April 6th, but for whatever reason, even though it appears to have updated successfully, we've got some strange data in production, something's not working right or unexpected behavior. We can again quickly find who committed that code. We can find the pull request, the JIRA issues associated with that, et cetera. So again, I take a quick pause. I'm going to check the chat, but it looks like we're good right now. Feel free to stop me at any time. Again, we've got all of these different images that we're managing and, and another great kind of executive summary here of the images that we have all across our environment. So sure, we see the image here, but we also see that it's currently deployed in three different environments and we have the exact environment and version that it is deployed into. So. You know, a very practical example, maybe we've got a more stable version in production, while newer versions or different issues we're trying to address in dev and staging. And then, as mentioned, um, on the previous screen we were in, we can click into those individual images. I can certainly go this route, but I've already loaded this one from earlier. If you remember when I opened the most recent, recent version we have in production. Again, we see uh, even more detailed information here. I, I know some of that we had already looked at with um, the, the JIRA, the pull requests, et cetera, that was associated, associated with that. We can also see all of our applications that are using this image here and click to those as well. I also mentioned, and now, you know, we can kind of think a lot of this to some extent has been related to the CD side. We can see the actual workflows and pipelines that actually built this image and click in here and get a much granular, much more granular view on a step-by-step -step basis of what's going on to create this. I call out here, um, I'm, I'm gonna zoom here. I know it may be a little difficult to see. We can see our pipeline. We can see what's running in parallel, uh, what's running sequentially. We can zoom in here. And this is, again, uh, if you do have familiarity with Argo, these are some of the enhancements uh, that we're building on top where not only are we seeing this workflow, but we've got actual you know, execution time here of the last time it ran. We've got a summary of the resources that are allocated to that. So if you're managing a, a vast footprint, you've got immediate access to the execution time. I mentioned some of the trend time that we have too. Is it performing slower? 
Now we can quickly go in, see the associated hardware with that, make changes as needed, and much more proactively stay in front of the performance of our different pipelines. We've got the manifest, the containers, inputs and outputs, et cetera, that are associated with these different steps. And then also, um, again, if there's any questions, feel free to stop me here, but I'll hop over to another way that we can look at all of our delivery pipelines and click in as well. So previously, that uh, previous pipeline we were uh, looking at was associated with that image. Here's an executive summary of all of the different pipelines that we have. So we can see, you know, we've got some of these where it looks like they failed even as recently as 12 minutes ago. We can click into those and see um, different situations. I'll click into uh, Flask UI here as an example. And again, if we think about that block diagram that we just took a look at with all of those individual steps and the associated information, we've got a repository now here of every single time this workflow has executed. So you've got that information handy to see if in any failure, maybe even in a success in that scenario where I mentioned it appears to have executed successfully, but something's acting up in production, we can go into that past, uh, the, the metadata that we've collected around that, see maybe for whatever reason, a step took substantially longer than all of the other successful runs. We're getting a lot of that visibility into the stack to further address problems much more rapidly than you've traditionally been able to. And I would also add again here in this dashboard, this is the dashboard look at that workflow uh, in our different pipelines. We've got these individual steps actually broken out here in an executive summary. So this is just another way of looking at kind of a quick summary of that diagram that we saw step by step with the parallel processes as well. We've got insights into the average duration, the execution, the number of times it's executed and the CPU and memory associated with that as well. So a lot of visibility, especially the larger and larger your footprint is growing, you're getting a lot of, of very quick access to critical information to make sure everything's running as smooth as possible. Lastly, a, a quick note here um, on I, kind of tying back to that graphic we saw early on the slide where we've got those four different Argo projects. You can think of our runtime as the Argo agent that you're installing over your cluster. And we see the different components, Argo CD, workflows, rollouts, events, uh, and then also some of the code fresh uh, stitching that we're doing as well to add the enhancements that we've seen in terms of visibility across the stack. Uh, and then the additional tooling that we're making to make everything work together from a CI and CD perspective. And you also think about this from a management standpoint in production. If you're an Argo open source user, uh, you know, as an example, I believe a month and a half ago, there was a critical security update that came out and was available. And if you're an open source user, that's re your responsibility to maintain that. And especially if you have a lot of different Argo agents, that's a lot of work for you to do. One, stay alert uh, with. So make sure you're up to date on all of the updates that are coming in, but also execute very quickly on those updates. Whereas in CodeFresh as well, I'll go back to just the overview of all the runtimes we have here in dev, staging, and production. If there's a critical update like that, you're going to see that on any of the, uh, we'll have a banner here across all of the screens that says, hey, there's an update available. And you can come in here and even see here, there's updates available that we can rapidly deploy in GitOps fashion to these different runtimes. So I've kind of burned through a lot. I don't see any questions at the moment. Let me double check here. Okay, yeah, it looks like there, there may be a question or two around um, using Argo, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so if you haven't used Argo before in your organization, should you learn Argo before working in CodeFresh? Uh, and the answer to that is, is not, not really. Um, you, the, the beauty is uh, we, we actually have a GitOps certification that, let me see, um, Sharon, I'm not sure if you'd be able to link that in the chat, by the way. I do want to call that out. We have a free certification on our website. Um, so that's an Argo-based certification we kind of donated to the community as one of our many contributions to the Argo projects. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, it, we're, we're leveraging Argo. We're built on top of Argo. So it's not that you would need to know each individual component before you get started. Uh, you can leverage, as I mentioned as well, if you just want to start on the CD side, you can leverage CodeFresh, get some of that extra visibility and enhancements that we've made, as well as our support from the get-go, uh, while just leveraging the CD component of it, as opposed to every single project. And then also just clarifying, it looks like there's a question around uh, what parts of CodeFresh are different from Argo. I would say, uh, one, some of this maintenance, uh, this ease of maintenance uh, that we spoke about in the runtimes is one that comes to mind. And then also, again, just kind of restating when you're deploying Argo at scale, 
uh, a lot of the visibility in terms of the execution of your pipelines, not just the pipelines as a whole, as we saw here, but the individual components and steps within those pipelines. Um, and then, so we've got this executive summary I can click in. And, and I just also want to add the integrations that we're building here um, are much more streamlined uh, than the open source projects. And uh, also, I'd be happy to follow up with you too if there's any more specific questions. But the, uh, you know, I mentioned we all of this data that we have access to here, we're streamlining that for you and giving you visibility across not only the most recent push to production, but as we mentioned earlier as well, the entire history of any time your images have been updated. So all this data collection is done for you. Uh, you're able to troubleshoot much more rapidly. And then lastly, like I touched on, um, if anyone's interested, I can link you to uh, our support SLAs as well. So we, we have different support tiers. Uh, a lot of folks are using us for our customer success team. We have 24 seven support options with even Slack channels, phone support, et cetera. Um, so those are a lot of the enhancements that uh, we're looking at. And then certainly um, I would say lastly, there is uh, on the Argo component side, as you're deploying, uh, we, we see companies where they're deploying numerous Argo agents. If you, if you have experience with that in the past and you're looking at multiple, every time you're deploying an agent, you have multiple user interfaces associated with those different projects. You have all the separate runtimes of those four different projects, whereas our runtime has combined all of those into one and it's bringing all of your Argo agents into this single pane of glass. So it's simplifying the uh, ease of management and visibility across the board. And then you benefit from our technical support and expertise in-house. So again, happy to, if there's any follow-up question there, if I can kind of uh, double click into any of those, feel free to let me know. Um, but it looks like at the moment that may be all the questions we have. So I'm happy to hang out, um, see if there's any more questions. If I can click into any of these different screens, give you another look at anything, feel free to let me know here and appreciate everyone's time. Um, give it just a minute. Okay, at the moment, it looks like we're good. I'll hang out for a few minutes. Um, you know, feel free if you're still typing something, I'll, I'll be here, no rush to, to get the question in. But really appreciate everyone's time on this Friday. I hope you all enjoy your weekend. And certainly if there's any follow-up questions or otherwise that I can help with, feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, we'll follow up with my contact information and look forward to talking to you. So appreciate it, everyone. Have a great weekend.